Let's work on part B now. So calculate the level of profits that result when the firm offers the profit maximizing contract. Now, what does that mean? It means we have to use the data that we found in the previous video, which was the optimal effort level, the optimal wage level. Now with that said, what's going to be the profit? Well, let's see. First of all, we need the profit function. And the profit function is the difference between the revenues that the company generates and the cost it has to incur. Now with that said, what are going to be the revenues? Well, we know that the revenues are the price times the quantity and the costs are going to be the wage paid to the guy. So minus the wage. Now with that said, we can substitute values because we know the quantity is a function of effort, which is theta times the effort. So we have profit equals to the price times theta times effort minus the wage. And we know the wage because we calculated previously. This is the wage that we saw in the previous video. So we're going to substitute it over here, which is going to be V plus one over two times P square times theta square divided by theta. Now with that said, we also know that we can substitute the effort level because we found the effort level in the previous video as well. So we're going to substitute it over here. Let me just zoom out to get more space because this is going to be a bit more mathy. So uh, go like that, yes. Now the profit is gonna be equal to, profit equals to P times theta times. Now instead of the, of the, of the effort level, we are substituting it. Instead of the effort level, we're substituting P times theta times theta divided by theta, that is our effort level, uh, minus, let's open the brackets now, so we go minus V, so minus V, minus the other term, one over two, P squared, theta squared divided by theta. Okay, now we can, now we can expand this, we can open some brackets here because we have a multiplication, P times theta multiplied with P times theta, well that's just going to be P squared times theta squared divided by theta minus minus now here we have also p squared theta squared divided by theta with a coefficient of 1 over 2 right with a coefficient of 1 over 2 so we have minus 1 over 2 times the other term p squared theta squared divided by theta and the reason we do it one next to each other is because we can see we're going to subtract the same terms with different coefficients so that's going to be fast minus v we're keeping the constant term minus v now with that said we can calculate the profit if we subtract from one because this is just one times this term and we subtract a half then we're left with a half so we will have one half one over two one over two times times p squared theta squared divided by theta minus v minus the constant minus the constant like that that's going to be the profit level now let's interpret all this math over here to see that it all makes sense what can we see how does profit increase how does profit decrease let's give some meaning over here well look if price increases keeping everything else constant then the profit would go up hope this makes sense price higher sales are more valuable therefore more money so profit would increase what else if theta increases, what is theta? Is the technology factor. So if technology becomes better, well then the profit is also increasing. Again, with better technology, production can go up, more sales on the market, more money for the company. So profit would go up as well. Now, if theta increases, if the cost of effort goes up, right? Keeping everything else constant, this value goes down, meaning that the profit level goes down as well. So why is that the case? Well, because if the cost of effort is higher, the worker is willing to put less effort because it's harder, meaning that the worker will generate less output, the company will sell less on the market. And finally, if V, which is the alternative utility, increases, then the profit level would decrease, right? We would subtract from this term, let's say from 100, we are subtracting a higher number. 100 minus 50 is 50, but 100 minus 60 is 40. So the profit would decrease. Why would the profit would decrease when the alternative utility has to increase? Well, because remember, that has to, has to deal with the participation constraint. Whenever the alternative utility, the alternative salary, so to speak, is higher, the company must pay more to attract the worker. But the payment to the worker is the cost of the company. In other words, if the cost to the worker increases, the profit left to the company decreases. Hope this all makes sense. And in the next video, we go to part C.